Nekyanada maloha, gonna start with the Sankura Pandanam, Om Nekyanana Paramasukaram, Kevalam Yana Moitim, Dwandwa, Titam Gagana Sadisham, Tatuva Masya Delakshim, Ekam Nityam Vimalamachalam, Sarvadi Sakshi Bhutam, Bhava Titam Chivanarihitam, Sakuram Tam Namami, Om Nityanana Paramashi Voham, Om Nityanana Paramashi Voham, Om Nityanana Paramashi Voham. So welcome to day two of the 25 days of Force Majeure Christmas. Um, I'm going to start with what do I define myself? I define myself starting my own Sampradaya or my own lineage, if you will, and the way that I'm going about it is what it is, and this is how I'm going about it. Um, and I choose to call myself a secular Hindu quantum catalyst fusionist because that is that space of all-inclusive, even the unknown, that I choose to continuously align myself to uh, despite all the challenges that I get faced with manifesting this my reality no what is the reality that i want i am fundamentally an anarchist i don't believe in government i believe in full personal responsibility and self-govern the narrative that media and society or secular society uh paints anarchists is not anarchy at all. Anarchists are all about responsibility, self-government, and most of them are ag agorists or farmers. They believe in full personal responsibility and the freedoms that come with. So having freedom or liberty has always comes with the responsibility to shoulder from the knowledge to everything. And the way that society is set up, it literally is that seeking to get to that because the cosmos does bless what one seeks. It tests you, Maya tests you, but being very persistent in the seeking that which you one is looking for is what it is the other thing too is like for me i'm not looking at creating an organization i actually prefer like how homeschoolers are hey we're gonna go cruise down over there and everybody just kind of shows up and then we just kind of cruise is what I don't know let let the, the things unfold right everybody's going to bring what their interests are their the uh, toys that they have or whatever 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 and in that inclusive flexibility things come out so how does that relate with Force Majeure Christmas, right? So, a lot of the things that I've been doing these doc for many years, like documenting, um, one could, from one angle, say investigative journalism, but it's not, that's not, the space that I'm holding, I'm holding that space of mediation, right? Because that's, and trying, because there's nothing wrong. Everyone has their perspective or their subjective truth based on the cards they hold and the narrative that they're trying to engage in. And those narratives have really nothing to do with me. I'm literally just a third party witness. And in this journey,
journey of witnessing different factions and sitting and listening to their mana'o and their story, their information and their story, their knowledge. I don't side with any one faction and some of the challenges that I feel I've overcome as best as I could because I you know going into the unknown you you don't know what it is you're you're gonna find right personalities opinions or perspectives or whatever it's literally really in the unknown and because of the way secular society is programmed they have sides right divide and conquer uh, the sides so you have to pick a team and i'm continuously being like no i'm just sitting and listening because i don't know i don't know what's right i don't know what's wrong because there is no right and there's no wrong there's only consent in any kind of dynamics and so um in that seeking because i literally walk exclusively on the spiritual side meaning temples heiaus connecting with the amakuas in that oneness relationship that unique relationship i have with each one one dharma god goddess amakua you you name it that is my relationship with that being. It's just like any other relationship, friendships. Amaku as gods and goddesses are the same. And I'm very fortunate to be on a very magical journey connecting with, like we, we're hold minimum a thousand and eight deities or a thousand and eight gods and goddesses get to know them and that has been the most beautiful journey getting to know them and their personalities some of them are very kolohe but because i only love them and accept as it is sometimes it gets hard and that's where I'm just kind of like the Kung Fu grip, white knuckle action, all the way. Just love, right? Because what is love? You ain't going anywhere. I ain't going anywhere. We're talking about eternity. Since we're not going anywhere, somehow, some way, this is going to work. Somehow. I don't know, but somehow it is going to work. And that's the beautiful journey of that unfolding. Now they're boons, right? I eat karma. I eat karma. That doesn't stick to me. It's irrelevant. Things start moving magically. Trying to go into the Miyahari breatharian dimension because it, it it don't have to right that's it that there's that not just a relationship or that gratitude or or whatever because it's just a I accept smiles right for those it, there's no obligation of anything it's just right breathing and it just kind of unfolds for them. So in the very dynamic spectrum of the space that I hold and I carry, I'm always walking where my na'au gets pulled, right? I'll show up and I'm like, oh, why am I here? <laughs> and then it unfolds why I was called that space because it's literally a pull there's i there's no 
explanation other than that. Some of the conversations that I have with Amakuas gets very interesting. So in that dynamic, inclusive showing up wherever I'm being called to show up. I bet I don't have an agenda. <laughs> so one of the things that in my walking, because I walk the Aina, I walk barefoot, I walk the Aina, when I'm walking up the Mauna, what I did was for six months straight, every Friday I walked from Oku'ola to the Ku'u in prayer for peaceful resolution. The kind of things that I've had to witness, I won't say here. I won't say the ugliness because only love exists. And I choose to focus on that. Whether someone wants to say rose-colored glasses, no, I'm very much checked into reality. Like Paramashiva, Maha Paramashiva, very much checked into reality. But I choose, because those are choices, to focus on love, on the love. Somewhere in there, <laughs> there is love in that happening. And so, one of the things, even in my walking, you know, all the way to the summit on my own, there's a lot of, I noticed that there was a lot of uh, windows on the ground. And I was like, oh, what is that? I did mention it to a friend, and then a friend, my friend said, well, just be careful. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but it's not like I'm doing anything. I'm just walking and observing. And I only found, and then, some time after that, uh, being supportive. This is the, ex this is an example of how inclusive, no opinion, take whatever it is with no opinion and showing up with love and support. Because spirituality, no matter what it is, is a subjective experience. The OFH a, the Occupied Forces Hawaii Army had a prophecy of a tsunami and I chose to honor individual sacred sentiments without opinion, without ridicule as best as I could and and the, the things that I learned and gained by making that choice is what the world needs for peace, global peace and that acceptance. And so being supportive regardless of the factions I get given like last minute or I would say entrusted to navigate through that uncertainty or the unknown and so when I made the graphic stating that Operation Exodus 
was a real or trill. And those kinds of things that happen, disagreements or falling apart or whatever, I don't know and left to piece together what happened continuously. What was interesting is, is in that happening, I was focused on, or my, my kuleana is, is going to the summit and honoring and in in that operation, those who are running the operation are Christian, and I honor that their sacred sentiment. As well as honoring the sacred sentiment of ancient Hawaiian Amapuas, and those, some of the modern day practices, That gets a little touchy because some people, due to secular society and, and not power manifestors, are mirroring that consciousness monocropping, which is spiritual terrorism of, no, it has to be done this way, ignoring individual, unique connections that people have with the divine whatever they call the divine. So, honoring Christian sentiments and their way of connecting, I also honor the pu'u or the um, that is on the summit of the Mauna and made choices to pour water during that this specific happening. I find out last week that the door in which that they posted the flag for this operation, Exodus, was on the door of the CIA. And the CIA has that underground bunkers, like I'm talking windows. It's not just windows, it's a window <laughs> that I've seen. Underground bunkers. just stop there on that because I don't want to go into that. It just goes points back to um, the American Civil War and the uh, more more accurately the Boston Tea Party is not done. It's still very much alive uh, as a conflict but pretty still that people don't are not aware as well as, this is the, the challenge as well, a lot of misdirection on constitutional rights, which is literally trying to um, assert one's own sovereignty, but sovereignty which is personal liberty or self-governed sovereignty. Sovereignty means government or self-governed or governed government. There's the we the people constitutional side. There's the U.S. Britain side of America. But those two sides will definitely get together because it's really about land to 
silent Native Americans as well as Kanaka Maori poor land. It's not only that, the extent of research that I look, because I look all the way to source, that's why I call it grandpas waving around their crayon scribbles, and whose crayon scribbles is nicer. It's who wrote language first, and then who had the first law book, and you know, organized community or whatever. But we're still in that evolutionary phase. I I wouldn't say that we actually actually devolved a bit because of slumlord colonizers. They're slumlords. I mean, when you look at all of the lack of innovation especially with like different things that i've seen like 1950s refrigerators had like compartments that fold up and you can take them out in the door and um light bulbs that you don't have to twist and it just right you just put it in and then you can pull it out all of those innovations as well as vehicles made from water water powered all of these things are indications that slum lords. And you got a choice, right? Because the different countries get the slum lords, and then there's the Jigaboo slum lords, right? What what are the the options? Being a very conscious being, a highly conscious being and trying to go in the enlightenment direction or living enlightenment because there's no boundary eternity has no boundaries past present future has no boundaries How do we get along? Because that's fundamentally what it is. And I'm hoping by me sharing a glimpse of the level of commitment of honoring individual sacred sentiments would inspire all to do as such. How I look at it as I'm a cutie good baby. You're a cutie good baby. We're all cutie good babies. And what do cutie good babies do? Cutie good babies will watch cartoons. Some have different favorite cartoons. And when they go to play with other kids, they find out what kind of cartoons other kids watch. And they don't watch. And they want to play together and, and somehow, like, that's how I look at it. What I see different things, posts, where people are, can't you see that the Bible is true and this and that? And the thing is, is in Hinduism, all gurus have a holy book. And Jesus and, and all gurus are power manifestors. Not all power manifestors initiate and train. Okay. But Hinduism is littered. Hundred million source books of scripture from so many gurus leaving their what they choose to leave behind written some choose to write in a parable 
Simoleon parables. Some choose to write the history of the taking place of what is going on at that time and the characters and the names that came up. And then there are those, well, and many of them will show the power manifestation. So Hinduism has a lot of holy books like the Bible. Now, I'm not going to say I've read all of them. I've, I've looked, perused, <laughs> perused, perused, you know. And my favorite Bible book, holy book, if you will, is Swamiji's Living Enlightenment book because it is applicable in times now and in any time without the caging of a narrative because it's more along the lines of how to think, how to be, and for that self-discovery and self-mastery, not duplicating, replicating, it's that bringing out that God particle that is unique to each one of us, and that shine, polish that shine. There's other things that I've seen regarding Islam as well. And it's the same thing. And it's funny because the cosmos doesn't matter if it's shit or diamonds. They're the same to the cosmos. It doesn't matter because the cosmos, it exists because the cosmos has it existing, brought it to life, right? Just like um, Mano, my little potato, earlier today, that was, he was <laughs> sleeping, potatoing on my lap. And I told him, you want to make a video? He goes, yes. <laughs> and he wants to make a video on how to inspire other kitties to be a potato. He's so cute. Yeah. Need more of those cute, good babies, right? But I was looking at him and his mother, because I'm a mother, his mother, for however reason, he ends up with me. And the fact that we can have a conversation, and not just him, Paula too, we can have a conversation, and that is such a miracle. And just looking at this cutie, cutie potato <laughs> fur baby, miracle. We all are miracles, equally, equally. And because consciousness grows on the timeline of eternity, not one life, there, there's no rush. There's no rush. So with that experience of occupation, accidents, and the other, other things that surrounded that experience, I'm sharing to inspire everyone by my example on how to be inclusive and honor people's subjective truths. It gets challenging 
because a lot of people don't look at it this way. I was invited to an ice cream party. Everybody has their own favorite flavor of ice cream. Lucky if you find people who share the same favorite ice cream, right? But then again, maybe not. And for me, I, I enjoy the diversity and not the monotony, right? The consciousness monocropping, which is monotonous, and versus the diversity and that mixing. And then that's its own beauty, right? When making the choice to stand in honor, right? Being Pono. Because I ain't going anywhere, you ain't going anywhere, right? Whatever your Amakua is, and mine is Parama Shiva, Maha Parama Shiva, Shiva, you ain't going anywhere, right? So, in that space, that I hold being a catalyst to keep trying. Showing up, it just means showing up, right? To the best you can. Everybody's on their cosmic flow and my flow is my flow. My flow is not other people's flow, I know it. Right? That's why I flow the way I flow. <laughs> I'm full on quantum quirk. <laughs> right. Things just happen and flow for me because of that space that I'm holding and the cosmos is co-creating and complicit in helping me manifest that reality. Now, what is that? In the end of all of this, right? Help Hawaiian kingdom, whatever story that they want to operate in individually or collectively. But for me, I want my own country, but I don't want subjects or citizens. I, I foresee for me, those who choose to be part of my vibe tribe should be king, king or queen, god, goddess of their own life. Right? HMFIC, head motherfucker in charge of your own life and your own family. Right? And instead of having all of these large countries, since everything's all commerce, maritime anyway, and treaties are commerce related contracts, and it should all just be paperwork, I don't see why it's so hard of a leap for individual families to have corporations or trusts, whatever you want call it and their own land right either everybody owns an acre of land or nobody owns an acre of land right yeah, when you come to land ownership slavery is inbuilt because if you got to pay a landlord you got to do that before you can even think about breathing, drinking water, eating, having clothes, place to stay, energy, all of this and that before you can, right? All of that. It's like a gang rape when those constructs are put in that way. And that violence that ensues because of those constructs. Now who's to... Who's responsible for this? We all are. By allowing it. Right? Oh yeah, Meow? You wanna do your video? You ready to do your video? How to be a potato? You gonna teach everybody how to be a potato? Yeah? Yeah. 
Yeah. Motivate everybody. Your people. Yeah, motivate your people how to be a cute potato. Yeah. Thank you. You're a cute potato. Yeah. You're a miracle. Everybody's a miracle. Now what gets very interesting is, you know, I hold that space, but people, secular society, people are grabbing. I guess grabbing with other humans. But if with the animals, then they just try to walk in. You know? <laughs> be like, hey, and then, you know. Not even that, some are grabby too. Can't just cruise. Yeah, it's crazy. So, yeah. Yeah, you're such a cute potato. You're a cute potato. Yeah. You're a cute potato. What is that? It's interesting because Kala and Mano get along very well. They're buddies. And all the animals that I've, that's been under my care, always are buddies. Always cute buddies. Yeah. No fighting, being nice and gentle. Yeah. 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 So yeah, what am I trying to do? I really appreciate that Swami J. Pailasa is the first Hindu nation. Well, the only Hindu nation in the modern era because there used to be 56 Hindu nations until Mughals, Muslims, Christians decimated the 56 countries. That, And it's funny because it's not like how Christianity and Islam is or it's it was very diverse because it's inclusive. And we um, blessed to, if you want to, and Hinduism is like, if you want, if there's 300 million gods and goddesses, and if there is nothing there that is manifesting what you want, you have the liberty to create your own deity, your own god. Well, what is it? What the actual science is, the science of manifesting the unmanifest. Right? And for me, the unmanifest for me is seeing everyone as their own country. Where there's a global peace treaty that everyone adheres to. And, and for me, it's like I think it's coming down to having a peace treaty with individuals individually, not just humans, but every every species, every everything. Oh, you cute little potato. Such a potato. Yeah, you are such a good potato. Thank you. And with the global peace treaty, which is actual and factual humanitarian law, that can be handled in court, coupled with a global bureau of conveyance. It really removes the necessity of countries because then it's basically honoring your your word and whatever business that you're choosing to run to contribute to humanity and continue to be blessed. And that's the space or vision I hold. I don't necessarily, uh, I don't want to be 
identified with a gang of one country because the smallest right to defend is that of the individual. So easy to gang up on somebody and, and do, and that's what the whole court system is. They're all about smear campaigns and narratives and whatever, 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 and that's not what I'm about. So good potato. Right. This is the training. You just come on over and go meow. You get hugged and loved. And you just go home. That's the potato training. Bueno. Thank you. You're so cute. No one could say I'm Swamiji potato. I definitely say it, claim it. I'm a total potato. 110% potato. Actually, 1,008% potato. Yeah. You're cute potato. So, yeah. That's the direction I'm wanting to go in, and somehow. All of this unfolding and in trying to inspire more connection and dialogue. We in dialogue, it's not a monologue of me, I'm doing this and you're going to do this. No, it's a we. There's a we. I get it, it takes more time, but we reincarnate, right? What's the rush? There's no rush. There's no rush. There's no rush for anything. Right? That rush is the ego. That rush is the ego. Because in cosmic time, everything is perfect. It really is perfect. I get it. <laughs> so patience is the first most subtle violence. Impatience. Impatience is the first most subtle violence. So what does one do? in time pass, right? To time pass. Well, that time pass is power manifestation. Cruising in Parma Shiwoham. That's what I do. Just continuously be soaked in cosmic truth. Right? Those cognitions, powerful cognition, cognitions. There's a saying I grew up in, because I grew up Buddhist in SGI, and it's the saying goes something like this, the indigo dye, if you continuously dye the material in the indigo dye, the material will be bluer than the indigo dye itself. And that's pretty true. Right? You know, what are we doing? We're power manifestors, and we are continuously engaging in the unknown or your go outside your comfort zone and continuously swim in the unknown or the ugly stuff and be okay with it and it's okay everything is okay oh, cute potato. he's so cute he's got this collar this gray collar and like a white shirt <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, potato. Potato. Well, thank you for listening. This is day two of the 25 days of Force Majeure Christmas. And um, I'm going to close with the Purna Mantra. Om Pur Namida Pur Namidam Pur Nat Pur Namida Chite Pur Nasya Pur Namadaya Pur Namivava Shishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Tat Sarvam Bhagavan Shri Nityananda Paramashivam Padakar Paramastu Om Nityanandam Aloha Nityanandam Love you I know you're doing the best you can with what you have We all do Same here Aloha Nityanandam